All right, so let's get into Josh Young, unfortunately. Yeah. I was Somebody, watching, by the way, just asked, can he still win Rookie of the Year? I was like, no. that's no. Unfortunately, we'll go into – I was going to go into the individual second, but I'll go into the individual first here. Unfortunately, this does end Josh Young's chance, chance to win Rookie of the Year because there's other candidates yeah. that uh, will probably stay healthy the rest of the way. And so since Josh Young can't really accumulate the stats needed and then have that impact in September that you would hope. Now, I guess we can hope and pray that – he can be ready by September 1st, but that's not likely at all. You're looking more at September 10th would be somewhat of a miracle. And, I, and, and that would be maybe the earliest I could put him coming back from this injury. But more than likely, you're looking at September 15th through September 25th. That feels right. Somewhere in there where he'll, he will be able to come back. And so you just look at missing all of this time. And Gunnar Henderson probably has a great chance now of... They have the best record in uh, the on the Amer- in the American League, the Baltimore Orioles, and I would say that most likely I'd now put my money on Gunnar Henderson. So as I said going into the weekend, hey, I think I'd put my money on Josh Young. I'm sorry you lost money. I did not know that he was going to get hurt and miss the majority of the rest of the season. Just to your point, you know, we talked about the other day about it was a three-person race between Henderson, Yoshida, and Young. In Boston, yeah. Is it's now down to Henderson and Yoshida's Josh Young is now 15 to 1 because yeah. unfortunately of this injury and, and in some spots it's even worse. When the play happened, I was watching this live with my son and I was like, that's a heck of a play and I thought that uh Skip Shoe- Shoemaker, Schumacher Shoemaker He's my teammate, and I'm already ruining his name. But I thought he was going to come out and argue the play because I thought he intentionally did it at first because the ball was hit so hard. And I thought, that was a heck of a play to get Andrew Heaney out of a first and second and nobody out situation here in the sixth inning that he would somewhat intentionally miss this line drive but kind of kick it forward towards third base because if the hitter who hits the ball gets disappointed immediately in the line drive being hit at 109 miles an hour and possibly being caught, he might put his head down and go like, dang it, I can't believe in this situation I hit the ball as hard as I possibly could and I get nothing out of it because then it turns into a triple play. But they ran there, and so you only get a double play. But I looked at my son and go, that was an amazing play right there to get a double play out of a line yeah. drive out. And then you see the replay, and you see that he almost completely missed the ball. And luckily, I guess unluckily, I guess I would take a double now. I would rather have a double and us lose that game than Josh Young be out most of the season now. I know that's a weird, that's a weird take because that play yeah. actually helped the Rangers win the game. Because if not, if he misses that ball completely, now a run is scored for sure, and it's second and third with nobody out. And I believe at the time, was it three? It might have been four to nothing at the time. But uh, it was three or four to nothing at the time of the top of the sixth inning. And I just thought, heck of a play. And then you see him kind of looking at his thumb, and you're like, hey, this might not be good. It was four four to nothing. nothing. And you're just looking at it going, but it'll be like, I just, I didn't think it was broke. There was no way I thought it was broke because you see catchers catch the ball bad at times and it's a bad bruise and it hurts. It hurts for like a month. I remember Ty Wigington, that son of a gun, and he's my one of my good friends, but he had a comebacker to me that hit my, my index finger on my glove. And for six weeks, I thought my finger was broken. It oh. might have been. I don't have to swing a bat. But I was like, it hurt so bad. Every time I caught a ball and it hit that finger, I wanted to like cry like a tear like formed in my eyes from how much, how painful wow. it was. But I was like, I can keep playing. But obviously a broken thumb and having to grip a bat and swing a bat and on contact have the vibration of the, there's just no way he has to sit out these most likely six weeks to get this better. And it just hurts the Rangers tremendously. So now Ezekiel Duran probably won't play the outfield anymore this year because he'll probably be playing third base every day. Now, obviously, you have Smith who can fill in there, too. Uh, And Josh Smith, he's he's a good player, but there's no power there. There's a guy that it's more like advancing a runner. It's, you know, you're hoping for a double every once in a while. And I'm not 
that's who Josh Smith is, but you lose 22 home runs, a lot yep. of RBIs. And for the immediate future, for at least this road trip, you will not have your five-hole hitter or your six-hole hitter because I don't think Jonah Heim's ready to come back on this road trip. So now you're looking and your at third Josh hole hitter sometime, and the, he sw- right. switches with Nate Lowe sometimes. Yeah, so now you're looking at Young and Heim being out for a little bit of time together. Then when Heim comes back, how compromised is he? He's yeah. only going to bat from the left side. So when a lefty comes in, do you pinch hit if Mitch Garver isn't playing? When was the last time Jonah Heim faced it a left-handed slider batting left-handed? I don't know. When he was 13? Yeah, probably I don't so. know. So he's never faced professionally yeah. a left-on-left situation. So if you bring in, let's just say Brock Burke was pitching for the other team, because I have no clue who's in the pen for the Oakland Athletics. So Brock Burke comes in to get Jonah Heim out. Well, I probably have to pinch hit for Jonah Heim in this situation, don't I? Because he's never faced... A lefty on lefty situation so i'm probably going to be like look i'm not going to put you maybe in the first or second inning i deal with it and and you you hit against a lefty but in the seventh inning they bring in a nasty lefty and my guy can only bat lefty who's never seen a lefty slider batting left-handed yeah like i probably have to put in mitch garver in this situation to pinch hit so it's it's going to be a interesting and and tough situation for bruce bochi the rangers i'm sure will be looking at guys that are random free agents right now yeah. to possibly bring in because yeah. I don't know of anybody in the minor leagues. Like, do you like, as far as I know, like Justin Foscue, who's kind of maybe major league ready, maybe. I don't think he's been playing third base in the minor leagues. They called up Orny Alice yeah. from Frisco, and he's a shortstop. Yeah. And I don't know if they're going to be like play outfield or you're a backup infielder or what. I have no, yeah. I don't I don't know if he's a great you know, infielder, and that's the plan. Somebody just asked Evan Carter time, and uh, I don't think so. Yeah, and I, and that would be kind of the mindset of well, obviously does that you help have Leody and Adolis out there. Uh, I mean, it doesn't. Jankowski and Grossman can play left field, yeah. so you'd put them in left field, let's say. But it's not like you can now move Jankowski or. Grossman to the infield to help you out, and Evan Carter can't play infield. Yeah, it's He's just Duran that you're moving. You know, yeah, and- so I don't think I don't think Evan Carter, but it'll be interesting if the offense struggles. I will say this as I end baseball nuggets, and I didn't even get I'll get to it. And Mike likes it, but the Chicago White Sox uh, situation is. If you are struggling offensively for the next two weeks, bad, which could be bad, right? Because Houston's playing pretty good baseball is maybe you consider flipping everything around and going, we are calling up Evan Carter because offensively we need him, but he hasn't yeah. proven anything at a big league level. Heck, wow. he hasn't even been to AAA yet. So that would be interesting. It really, really would.